Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hoag. Whoops. I'm AJ Hoag, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native. I train you, I teach you. You speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. And you enjoy it. When you join my VIP program, you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there today. Today we have an interview. I know you all enjoy interviews. So do I. And our interview today is with Oscar Payus of Unlimited Spanish. Oscar, of course, first, he's, he is Spanish, Catalan. <laughs> uh, and he first learned, he learned English with Effortless English. He was, uh, you know, one of my students, which is great. And he did a, an excellent job. He really learned English well. He speaks well. You'll see that. And then he decided to become an, a Spanish teacher, to use the same methods of mini stories and point of view stories, you know, the effortless method, TPRS, these kind of things. He decided to use all of these methods to teach the Spanish language. I myself uh, am one of his students. So he was one of my students, and I was and am one of his students. I have used, he's got four courses, I believe. I'll let him talk about it more, but he has uh, like a beginner course, a 30-day beginner course, then kind of his uh, first course. I'm not sure what he calls it. Then he's got one, I think it's called Curso Magico, the magic course, which is his third course. And then he's got a fairly new one, a fourth one, which helps you with a little bit more of the, the more advanced grammar of Spanish. But again, using stories, not grammar rules, none of that. And it's called uh, Curso Inesperado, which is uh, I'm doing that course right now. So he's a wonderful teacher and a wonderful guy. We've, I've known him for uh, many years. I have met Oscar several times visiting in Barcelona and had a great time. So let's just go on over. I just want to wanted to give that quick introduction. Oh, I want to put on the screen his, uh, let me put his website. Here we go. Sorry, one second. Let me just type this for those of you watching so you can have his unlimited spanish.com. And we'll add that to the screen. So let's see. I think I'm going to be on the left side of the screen. And I think he'll be over here. So we'll have him there. So if you're interested in Spanish, use his course, especially if you're a beginner or even low. I was a, what kind of a high beginner when I started his course. And I'm kind of a lower intermediate now, kind of getting into the middle intermediate and using his, other, his more advanced courses now. It's so really great. Okay, let's do it. Let's call him. And as usual, those of you watching live, I'll come to your questions and comments. First, I'm going to chat with him. I have some questions for him. We'll talk a little bit. And then after that, I'll come and you can ask questions. All right, let's call Oscar. Oh, I guess I need my headphones. Hey, Oscar. Long time. Long time, no see. I know. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Yeah, I got... How is, how is the sound and the picture, the video? You look good. Uh, sound is good. I think everything's fine. Okay, let's cross our fingers. Okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll tell you what. Uh, at some point, I would love to... I'll email you, but I just like to catch up with you personally since it's mm -hmm. been a while. But we'll 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 keep it official and talk about 
uh, languages today. <laughs> Very well. All right. Okay, good enough. So uh, I just I just gave the introduction, you know, talking about how you learned English, kind of using these natural methods and, and effortless English, and then became a Spanish teacher and have unlimited Spanish now where you are using these same methods. So why don't you just give yeah. an overview of, you know, I guess kind of your journey, like first as a learner and then mm -hmm. as a, beginning as a teacher. Yeah, well, a few years ago, uh, believe it or not, I couldn't have a basic conversation in English. And I wanted to be able to, to speak in this language, so I decided to learn English grammar. So a bad, bad choice, right? Yeah. And after some time of intense study, I hired a private teacher in order to practice conversation. And I thought that with all those grammar rules in my head, it would be easy. But the surprise was that uh, I got continuously stuck in the middle of easy sentences. I got nervous. And in short, it was a complete disaster. It was a waste of money. Mm. But one thing I noticed that I was learning only when uh, the, the teacher was speaking. Uh -huh. So I, I was paying attention. And then I thought, OK, there is something here. I need to, to, uh, I need to do some research. I found uh, the input approach uh, method, and finally I found you and your course, and I started using it. And then if, if what was the experience like, you know, as uh, coming from some, you know, the traditional textbooks and grammar and classes, and then, uh, and then suddenly you're doing all these crazy stories and things? <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing is that, my first approach was, okay, I'm not going to quit grammar because I think it's really important. But then I saw that when I started using your, your courses uh, with a lot of many repetitions, I saw that instead of thinking uh, how to say it, I started thinking in what to say. So it, it was like my, the English was coming up to my mind and very easily, specifically for, for basic vocabulary and expressions. Mm -hmm. So it was that was in the first month, two months. I see. And then, mm -hmm. um, oops, trying to, um, I'm just playing with the video. Sorry. All right. So then, uh, obviously, so you, you, that was successful. And then at some point, you decided, uh, well, now I want to become a teacher. Like, do the, uh, so talk, how did, how did you start that and get started with unlimited Spanish? Well, I saw that, that the method was so powerful and so useful and it adapts very well to our lifestyle. We are so busy nowadays. Mm. So we need a method that, uh, let's say that we can use while we are doing other things. For example, I really like walking and I used to run a lot, but also doing the dishes, waiting in a line and driving. Although uh, all that time is wasted unless you uh, don't uh, do something useful with that. So I saw that, wow, this is perfect. And the method uh, works very well with the English. So I can create lessons. Uh, I spend like uh, six months to eight months to, to create a, a good set of lessons, uh, very balanced uh, with a sense of humor. And I saw immediately that my first students uh, started to speak in Spanish, and it was amazing. The method works not only with English, but with Spanish too. And well, you know, absolutely. I, I've told this story before, but so I started doing your lessons. It was probably two, maybe three months before. Uh, this, so this was uh, almost five years ago. And I was mm -hmm. planning to walk the, the Camino de Santiago. So about, uh, let's say three months before, I yeah. I really, I got your lessons. I really dove in every day. Boom, boom, boom. Hammering away at, your, at, uh, at the mini stories. just And just what mm -hmm. you said, just listening. Like I, I didn't really, I didn't study at all. Uh, just, okay. just walk around because I was kind of training for the Camino. So I was just walking around listening to your lessons again, mm -hmm. again and again and again. And I had a great experience. And, you know, of course I wasn't, I, in three months I didn't achieve like, high fluency, but I, I, I managed to manage everything in Spanish during that trip. You know, I get calling hotels and getting reservations and I chatted with people and it made the whole experience so much better. Mm -hmm. And then just recently, and the, the, re the reason I, I thought of you actually just recently okay. was that, 
our mutual friend Steve Kaufman has did a video about uh, he's learning multiple languages and he talked about and you know you never ever you act, when you use these methods you don't actually ever lose anything really you don't really lose it's it true. and so it's I said true. so I thought okay it's been almost five years and five years I've done no Spanish like really nothing you know okay so I thought all right I'm gonna test it right now so I I I put in uh, like the last mini story of your uh, your original course mm -hmm. and uh, I mean I understood 90% of it without effort I mean oh, just I was like boom amazing. boom boom I'm like wow so then I uh, I there was an audiobook it's actually Steve's book in Spanish that I used to listen mm -hmm. to also so I just chose like a chapter randomly in the middle played it again yeah. 80 to 90 percent comprehension I uh, five Amazing. years and that's with no I mean none and so it just it, it it really hit like wow this you don't lose I mean my speaking is very rusty I, probably I would need a couple months to you know kind of reactivate that but the fact that I, my understanding is still so good after all of that time Hmm. Uh, you know what maybe you can talk more about what uh you know why why does this work so well in your opinion well it works so well because first of all uh, we acquire the language we don't study it and then we produce the language thinking in, in rules like for example if you are doing some calculations doing some math you need to think in terms of, of, of the rules and theorems and everything. Mm. It's a very intellectual process, but when it comes to speaking, what happens is that we need to create patterns of the language that go inside, go deeply inside our mind subconsciously. That's why it's so important to, to be able to speak without translating in our mind. Yeah. Right? Right. So, for example, in a typical language school, what we see is... Uh, students are very good with grammar, but at the same time, they can't speak very well. The fluency is, is very, very low. They try to translate. Yeah. I, I, and that happened to me. I was like back and forth from English to Spanish and Spanish to English. I was not aware of that. And with your lessons, what happened is because I had to, to answer so quickly Easy questions, that, that, that's, very, that's very important. Easy yeah. questions, answering so quickly. And with lots of repetitions, at the end, I was able to kind of uh, answer without thinking. Yeah. So every time I, I heard, uh, heard like something in English, I immediately got the meaning without back and forth. That, that's, very, that's very demanding for yeah, our brain. Exactly. We're forcing our brain to, to do that. Right. And can you talk more about how, you know, some, some people, uh, because I'm so strongly against this, what you're talking about, that memorizing of grammar rules, people sometimes will uh, misunderstand me when I, and they think I'm saying grammar is not important. You don't need to learn yeah. grammar, but that's, but it's, it's, that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's, that you have to learn what you're saying. You have to acquire it as like, mm -hmm. Stephen Krashen says. Stephen so can Krashen, you talk yeah. about like how, like, so I'm right now, I just started doing your, uh, your, your fourth course, really great. Mm -hmm. the, the Curso Inesperado. Yep. Just started. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very grammar focused, but mm -hmm. there, there's like, it, you're not like giving like, you know, explaining, well, this is the subjunctive in Spanish and da, 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 you know, it, it's just, it's, it's a story. It's this kind of little funny story. Uh -huh. But there's a ton yes. of grammar in there. I'm definitely learning grammar. So can you talk about how you're, teaching grammar with this method without studying it in, in, you know what I mean like how are you teaching it in such a a way that that works yes for example yes in that last course I created the course with intention of just giving some hints just to think about how you use the language yeah so let's say for example let's talk about hypothetically okay so something that hasn't happened yet but it could happen. Yeah. So let's use these structures or, or these these patterns. Yeah. That is a way of giving a hint, giving a, like a, something to think about. Yeah. Another way is let's study the second conditional with the past simple in, in the clause and whatever. That is just nonsense. Right. So, but I think that the the bottom line here is is just just practice and just listen to a lot. And even if you don't have any clue at the end, you figure it out. It's something that, that comes to you, to my mind, to your mind. 
Yeah, you know, this is what what I get, I I believe. Yes, sorry. No, I was gonna say exactly that. I found that, mm-hmm. um, and this might just be me because I'm mm-hmm. a little lazy about <laughs> anything that's kind of like study. But I often find that like so like with your uh, with your original. Did you, did you call it the, what's what do you, what's the name of your second course? The one that I did. The second course is the original course. Okay, the original course. Perfect. This is the first one I created. The, yeah. the second one is is for total beginners. You don't need any knowledge of Spanish. So it's uh, called 30 day crash course. Only 30 days you start to you, you, you begin to speak. I see. So the 30 day course is from you, you're a low beginner, you're nothing. Yeah. From it, scratch. From totally scratch. From and scratch. it gets you up and then from there you go into the uh-huh. the original course would be yes. what, what a total what a total beginner would do. Yes. 30 day crash course. It's a very short course. Affordable and then you have the original course with eight to nine hours of uh, audio. And then I have the what I call the third level, which is kind of more uh, advanced because I see that uh, people want to, to learn more and more and want to be more elegant, want yes. to, to speak more elegantly with complex structures. And I, I tell them it's not necessary, hmm. but okay, we can, we, can, we can create another course for you guys. That's, that's what, that's what the, I, I did. Is that the Curso Magico? The... It's, yes, Curso Magico. Uh-huh, yes. Uh-huh. And then finally, then the Curso Inesperado is the... Curso, yes, Curso Inesperado. It's, it's, it's a short course, Curso Inesperado, just to, uh, let's say, to, to practice the most common uh, problems with, with advanced uh, students. I see. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. Really enjoying it. Yeah, Let's start. I'm, I mean, on less, I'm on lesson one. <laughs> lesson one. Papa Noel. Okay. Papa <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, great. So, talk about. Can you talk about then the actual, like technique? Like, how are you doing this? These, you know, these uh, point of view stories or the mini stories. Um, can you just talk a little more about, like, you know, how can you learn grammar from a story? Some people don't get it. They don't quite understand. Like, well, how's that possible? Okay, so first of all, we have to understand that uh, grammar is a set of rules that tells us how to use the language, and it's so complex and with so many rules and exceptions. Yeah. That it, it doesn't help at all. So it, it's a bad, bad idea. So on the other hand, you can use grammar, to, for example, to improve a little bit your writing, especially if you want to be very precise. And the problem, well, well, I said that before, but what we need is to develop the feeling of what's correct and incorrect when uh-huh. we hear or read. Okay? Yes. It's a feeling. It's subconscious. And for example, let's say uh, if we let, let's say you have a conversation and someone asks you, uh, where does John go to, to study, whatever? Hmm. And then you say, John, and then you stop and then you say, OK, I have to. Uh, it's the third person present tense, negative form. <laughs> hence, the auxiliary word should be does instead of do. So you don't say John doesn't go to school yeah sorry sorry you say that but you right. don't say john don't go to school right so for example if someone says john don't go to school you immediately know you immediately immediately know that it's incorrect but you're not thinking in those terms third right. person present tense negative form it just sounds so that, wrong that's, that, yes it, it's it's yeah it feels so so Steal wrong that, something please don't, like... don't say that to me anymore <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's a, it's a, so this is exactly what we do with our own language. Mm-hmm. We don't have to review continuously review the the grammar we studied in high school. Yeah. The more we read, the more we listen to correct content, the more we develop that skill, that feeling that it feels uh, correct, it sounds correct. Does that make sense? Does yeah, that make yeah, sense? Absolutely, it does. Yes, and, and it's and uh, it leads right into my next question, which is uh, about like what is your uh, advice about repetition? So, like, I think, hmm. like, so for example, let's say I've listened to the story about the penguins and the zoo, you know, from your original course, and so you yeah. know, some of those phrases just stick in my head, right? And it's okay. because I've listened to it so many times that I. Th- that that's where I, you know that's kind of where I get that feeling from of what sounds right. Uh, how, what's your advice on like how much repetition? Okay, how much repetition? So, 
For me, the main problem I detect is that language schools try to cover as much material as possible in a very short period of time. Therefore, therefore learning becomes superficial and there is no consolidation whatsoever. Mm. Typical situation, a student learns something for the exam and after some time, he or she completely forgets it. Yeah. So that's why we need repetition. So yeah. he, here's, here's the rule, a general rule, I, the advice that they usually give to students. If your level is low, you need to repeat many times. Yeah. The, the, if your level is low. If your level is advanced, you can repeat less. Yeah. But still, you can stick with a single topic or listen to the same people, mm. for example. Right. If... We, if we want, we can talk a little bit about mini stories and point of views. Yes, indeed. Well, that's kind of, and that's where I'm kind of get, getting it, uh, yeah, getting yeah, to. We, that say, we like, try to get into that. <laughs> yeah, because because um, with your like you know like say uh, when I was doing your your uh, original mm-hmm. course with the mini stories, uh, yeah. I yeah I did a lot of repetition. I mean, I just yeah. I for each one, I just I don't know huge amounts, thirty, forty, fifty more per. Audio, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, repetition is is paramount. It's, it's crucial if you want to develop uh, very solid uh, patterns of the language, especially to activate the language. The more you repeat, the more you activate the language. So many, I, I found some students who say, "Well, I repeated this a couple of times. I understand everything, so I, I can move on." Yeah. Right? No. You can't, because it's not about understanding superficially. It's about creating a very solid foundation of the most common patterns of Spanish. That's the idea. When we speak, we don't use 20,000 words. Maybe we use 500 to 1,000 in a basic conversation, but maybe up to 2,000, not anymore. And basically, we use the present tense, past tense, and a little bit of future tense, maybe. Yeah. It's not complicated. It's not something that we need to um, to learn very com- complex uh, structures, grammar structures. We are using the same phrases, the same uh, verbs, the, the, the same tenses over and over. So the, the key to understand is we have to repeat that. Mm. So obviously... What's good about the mini story is that not only you just repeat, just listening, like, oh, my God, okay, another time. So you, you, you have to answer questions. Yes. And that becomes very fun because in my case, uh, I don't care if I repeat 20 times because there's always something new I can, I can learn. For example, I try to, to answer as quickly as I can. I try to develop a very good answer in only five seconds. I try to focus on pronunciation or intonation. I try to anticipate the next question. Hmm. And that, that's, that's amazing. And you can learn a lot. You, you, don't, you don't realize how much you can learn with this technique. I'm, I'm extremely happy with myself and with, with my students. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And uh, even within the mini story, the way is the way that the, the, the method, the technique of it also has built in repetition because you're saying a sentence, then you're asking a question using basically mm-hmm. the same structure and same vocab. So now that you're getting you're you're getting like a double or tri- and then you're giving the, and then you're waiting and then you're giving the answer again. So you're getting like at least like a triple repetition. Plus, then you just exactly. tell the story straight. So you get like four or five repetitions of those key phrases, even within one listening, right? Yes, that's that's amazing. Yes, uh, it's not that you just repeat the same question. There are some some uh, changes, minor changes. So yeah. you are repeating the same with minor changes. You you are in um, maybe negative and, and, and the positive form, and I don't know, and and the when, the who the what, the where, and you see that the, the, the verb to be in the past changes, uh, was, were, uh, it's, it's in plural, and it's just you don't think in, in, in how it changes. It's just, okay, it feels natural now to use those uh, those patterns in, in, in my language, in my speaking. And what is a... Uh... 
what is a point of view story then? Like, how, what is uh, what does that add then on top of everything you just said when you yeah do okay. point of view? So yeah, well, a point of view is is in short is a story that is told more than one time, and each time we change a grammatical point. So, for example, let's say we are comfortable with the present tense, but um, have some uses with the past. If I tell you the same story in the present tense and then again in the past, you'll naturally see how the grammar changes because it changes the, pa- and the, 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 the tense. So and then you remember, OK, and now we are using did instead of does. So we are using, uh, I don't know, how it changes certain, um, how certain verbs changes in the past. So it's so natural that at the end, you see that uh, how easy it is to, to use another chance. Of course, you need, you need time. And one of the things that I always say about this method, it's, it's not a miracle. You can't speak in seven days. Right. But I think that at least you go three times faster when you use these methods mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it's so natural. It, it's, it's so amazing. Yes, indeed. And you know that, uh, you know, Steve, Steve over at Link, Steve Kaufman has become a big fan of mini stories now. Hmm. He's we. Uh, I just met him. He was in. Uh, I'm I'm in Osaka now, and and uh, he and his son were just here. We had dinner, and uh, we talked a lot about. Uh, we we talked about you actually. We we may be contacting you about an idea, but uh, but anyway, uh, we talked about mini stories, and mm-hmm. and and he feels exact. He has finally started listening. He's using them now in his language learning as he's learning some mm-hmm. new languages, and he feels exactly what you're saying that that he feels like he can rev up, you know, get up to speaking much faster now than he used to. Yes. I want another advantage of the mini stories is that you speak from day one. So you, you listen to a lot. There is the, the traditional approach of this. It's not traditional, but it's an input approach where you spend like six months just listening and then you try to speak. It's okay. But with the mini stories from day one, you speak. So you hear yourself uh, saying something in, in the foreign language, the, the target language. Yes. And, uh, and you get used to 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 hear yourself uh, speaking in, in a different language. So when it comes to having a conversation, then it's not so uh, it's not so let's say uh, challenging. Mm. And after two minutes of, of having uh, in a conversation, all the, all that language, all those patterns that you have practiced come up and it's it's amazing yeah, yeah. so you know you don't need a beer or two in order to have a good conversation <laughs> right 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 ah, amazing. <laughs> how why don't we uh go to uh our live um live we're live so we got our live comments so i know people like to oh, ask oh, questions sorry, sorry. our live audience yeah. to ask yeah. you questions because uh, uh i know they have they're typing f- questions furiously over here <laughs> so I'll try to in English, in English, I hope in English. They of occasionally course. throw Spanish in there to test me. <laughs> and since I mentioned it, I'm like, all right, go ahead. It's good practice. All right, let's see. Um, okay, uh, okay. So here's a question about total beginner, so that you can address this because you've got that of course. What can a mini story do when you know don't know anything about the language? You're starting at zero. Oh, he's mm-hmm. saying even if you don't know the alphabet, A, B, C, uh, you can't understand anything. So how do, you, how do you start from nothing? How do okay. you do it in Spanish? In Spanish. Okay, um, I just wanted to mention that all my courses come with, with two columns. The first column is in Spanish and the second column is in English. So you don't need any, any dictionary. So you can start from scratch and then you read in Spanish. I don't know the meaning of this. And then you can see the meaning. So with that said, it's true that, for example, if you are from China, you don't even know the, the alphabet. So what, what you should do is just to, to grab a very easy grammar Spanish uh, book, just to, to check a little bit about the alphabet and about the, the most common things. Of course, with that grammar book, it, the, the purpose is not to, to start speaking, but just to just to understand a little bit, because it's completely a new language. Just the it's just, phonetics, the yeah, phonetics phonics and, or whatever. Yes. yes, and maybe you can you can hire a private tu- tutor 
in, in order to, to introduce the language. Maybe yeah. you need like three classes or so. And then you start from scratch once you get used to the, the alphabet, for example. And then, for example, in my first course, I think the first uh, phrase is, I am Felipe. It's, it's very easy. I am Felipe. So it's, yo soy Felipe. So it's very easy. So it's, it's, it's just that. Yes, indeed. And you're right. And you just jump in, like you said. I think that that's mm. exactly right. You jump and in. And you can check the grammar book. You can check the grammar book. It's not that you have to burn all the grammar rule, uh, books. Mm. Well, you can do that, but <laughs> it's not that, that, that you, you need to do that. Mm. You, you, maybe you have a specific doubt about something and, and it's just you need to, to check it. Okay, just do it. Don't worry. But spend 90, 95, 99% of the time listening and uh, answering questions in the mini stories. And I, you know, I don't know about your opinion, but uh, about this, but I think also it's good to be comfortable with not knowing everything. Like again, when I was doing that your original course, um, mm -hmm. I would listen to stories and uh, like many times without even checking the text, and there'd be words I didn't know, and many times by just repeating, eventually I would sort of. It became like a puzzle. Like a, it kind of kept yeah. me engaged in it. So I'm like, what's that word? What does that word mean? And I would try to piece it together from what I did know. And mm -hmm. I would, it was surprising how much I actually did figure out eventually. And then, yeah, and then yeah. when I couldn't do it, I would go check the text and go, ah, that's what it means, you know. But here's I, is yeah, here's something. Here is something that always happens with your lessons and my lessons. Let's say you are in the lesson set of lessons three. 10, to, uh, 10 or 20% of, of, of the words, you are not very sure. And then when you go to, you, you, adv you move on, and then you are in the set of lessons 10, let's say. When you go back, you almost understand everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it feels so easy. And then you think, wow, I, I had some issues with this, and now it feels super easy. It feels like too easy. Maybe it's another lesson. It's yeah. just like another, yeah. Yeah, so, it, it's it's it, it, and that's a wonderful feeling to remember back. You're like, yeah. this was so hard, and now it's. Mm. You know, Sometimes our brains, our brains, we, we can't dictate. We can we can decide the order of 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 what we learn. Mm. So we can't decide. It's, sometimes it's just a word, a combination of words that doesn't stick. But after some time, the brain says, "Okay, now I want to learn it," and then. <laughs> But that's why we need so much time, uh, spending so much time listening and, and, and answering the questions and, and just have fun. Uh, if, you, if you think um, how children learn, mm. you'll see mm. lots of mistakes. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes. and, and you, you, you tell them, no, it's not in the, the passive go, gond. It's not gond, it's, it's wind. And they... they and they do that, or they make that mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one day they they, they don't. And they just there, yeah, and it just clicks at some yeah. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what? Uh, Billy's saying, "What is it? This is a Spanish question. I mean, I can answer this one myself, but I'll get. Let's get your opinion about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it better? Uh, is it better to learn Latin Spanish uh, or Spain Spanish? Because Latin Spanish is spoken more in the world." What's your opinion? Uh, mm. You obviously teach Sp okay. Spain Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Um, my accent is, is from Spain, but uh, my accent is very neutral. And in my courses, I, I, I use very common vocabulary. So first, first, my accent is, is very neutral. But also, we have to understand that if you go to Latin America, you go to Mexico, they speak a dialect or, or, or a portion of the language is, is very local. And if you go to Venezuela, it's different. If you go to Argentina, it's again right. There's different. not because it's really not accurate to say Latin Spanish because you've got Argentina and Mexico are not no. The same. It's completely different. If mm. you if you go to Cuba, for yeah. example, it's again it's different. So, uh, well, like I said, uh, I try to speak as neutral as possible, mm. uh, enunciating, pronouncing the different sounds and then if you have to go to a certain country in Latin America in a few weeks it, it would be very easy for you to mm. you know to get used to the local accents 
slash dialect if they have one. It's, that's the exact same answer I give about people ask me. It's always British versus American English. And I say, I, mm -hmm. it honestly, doesn't matter. Learn the standard accent from someone who speaks clearly. And then if you have to go to Australia, if you have to go to New Zealand, if you have to go to wherever, then kind of immerse yourself in that for a while and you'll be fine. Yeah. 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 Because it is still the same language. It is. Okay. Oh, we got a Spanish question. I'll translate it. Hi, now I am motivated to learn English and Japanese at the same time. Okay, let's talk about that. What about learning two languages at the same time? Um, we've been discussing this lately because this is another topic I talked with Steve about where he has changed his mind, where he now believes this is a good thing to do and he's enjoying. Um, and I know like some of my listeners right now then are, are probably thinking, well, maybe I'll try, you know, start doing some Spanish. So what, what's your opinion on learning a couple languages at the same time? If you want to learn two languages at the same time, well, first of all, you have to be very disciplined. You have to, to schedule it because we have the tendency to go with one language instead of the other because we like it more yeah. for some reason, you know. And I wouldn't uh, mix I wouldn't learn two languages from the same family. For example, Spanish and Italian. I wouldn't do that. It, it, <laughs> it would be very awkward, uh, awkward to, to mix it up yeah. in conversations. It's, 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 <clears throat> but if it's Japanese and Spanish, why not? Oh, or English, why not? It's a total different uh, language. Uh, they are total, uh, totally different. Um, I know Stephen, uh, Stephen Christian, Steve Kaufman, I, I know that he, I, I remember he said that you, get, you can have two languages. One is the 80% of the time, you spend 80% of the time with the language, and the second language, 20% of the time. And after two months, then you, you, you switch that. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I remember that he said... Um, if you if you you incorporate a new language, when you come back, you you, you, you start studying uh, the, the previous language, mm. it becomes like very easy. It's just that it's a reset in in your brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah interesting. Yeah. Good. 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 Okay. Let's see. <laughs> All right, we're getting the Spanish pronunciation. Okay, mm -hmm. now I think this probably varies by region, maybe. It's the, the, the pronunciation of the V in uh, Spanish. So, vivir, right? Is it vivir or vivir? Is it more of a B sound or V? Well, or does it matter? 99.9% right, .9 of people in Spain, they pronounce um, both sounds the same. B. B. Vivir. B. Vivir. Yes, bibir. I say bibir, and everybody says bibir. In the past, it's true that maybe one century ago, there was that that distinction, but not anymore. I see. Mm -hmm. And is that, uh, as far as you know, is that similar in most uh, places in Latin America too? As far as I know, yes. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's see. What's your... Oh, this is just kind of a nice comment, but uh, Hien Ha says, I find many stories very helpful. They help, mm -hmm. uh, must be a teacher. Uh, they help my students practice well and can remember the tenses and forms of the verbs easily. The way of many stories is really useful. We can apply these to any lesson. Thank you. So. Thank you. Confirming what you said. Okay, let's see. Okay, this, uh, this is great because you get to answer some questions that I get all the time. <laughs> so you get your opinion. What's your opinion if you don't understand some vocab when reading? Should you use mm -hmm. an English to English dictionary or a translation dictionary or no dictionary? What's your opinion on that when you're reading things? Okay. I can I can give you my my secret. I just use a Kindle, it's what I do. and 
Yes, and then I, I use my finger. Yeah. I put the, the finger on on the damned words I don't know. Yeah. And then magically it appears that the meaning. Yeah. That's what cool. happens to me is if in the first page I, I see that word. Oh, this is the meaning. The second page again. What was the meaning again? And uh, after seventeen times, I I yeah. kind of learn the word because. Yeah. But it's very good because you see the word many times in different contexts uh, and and different and different sentences. That's yeah. the only way to learn. Please don't 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 do that thing that is a list of words or even sentences. It's too artificial. Yeah, I agree. I, that's exactly what I do. You use uh, um, like English to English dictionary or uh, translation English to Spanish? Uh, it's a it's a translation. Yeah, that's what I do. Too. It's a translation, but it's okay. You can use both. Hmm. I usually use a, a translation because it, it's easier for me. Yeah. Because it, it's only one word usually, but 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 the definition of the word in English you have to read it and then you you, you forget the the flow of the story. Hmm. Uh, and maybe the definition it. has new words too, so then yes. you're like, ah. yes, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, and great. Sometimes, I, sorry, <laughs> no, just one thing. What happens to me is. is I decided to read all in English a few years ago. Hmm. That is amazing. Just just English, and then I, sp when I am speaking in Spanish, and a word comes up uh, in my mind, and okay, but it's an English word, so I don't know now, right now, in Spanish. <laughs> it's a couple of seconds, a few yeah. sec seconds. It's it's what what's happening. For example, I got used. Uh, sorry, I got very interested with nutrition, yeah. and there are so many specific terms and vocabulary. And then I wanted to say, okay, fasting, fasting. How it's called in Spanish? Oh, ayuno. Oh yeah, it's ayuno. I was using uh, this English word because yeah, you're reading fasting. it so much. Fasting, fasting, fasting. Yeah, it's so yes. And I think in terms of uh, in English terms, and I don't like it because in theory I am a Spanish <laughs> teacher. <laughs> That's a very bad uh, side effect. I don't like. You learn too much. <laughs> kidding, kidding. All righty. Let's see. Okay, so you know these are all common questions I get. So I'm glad to see that your take on them um how can you improve speaking when there's no one to talk to just by listening let's say um your level's pre-advanced or upper intermediate even so what would okay what do you do if you're no one in your okay. town speaks spanish or english or whatever yes you don't have anyone to practice first you um, we we mentioned that this you have the mini stories yeah. but also what you can do is just to talk to yourself not that you are crazy or something, hmm. but for example, you can, at the end of the day, you can, you can just think, uh, talk to yourself how the day was. For example, yeah, I went to visit my, my family and then I ate a wonderful cake and, and whatever. Yeah. So just, just practice with yourself. Just to explain, describe something, describe uh, an experience that you, you had. Just and another thing you could do is it's just a journal, a journal in, in, in the target language. Yeah. But you don't have to be very, like, it doesn't you don't have to, to write too much if you don't want to, but at least five ten, uh, sentences per day, just just things random, random things, things that have happened to you. Nice. Okay, Gustavo. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, I'm going to translate this to English. Uh, do you know some method to learn French with many stories? No, that I'm aware of. Maybe, but well, there is a website called Francais Authentique. Hmm. And the guy is from, from France and he, he has some some stories. And But I'm not sure if he uses the mini story method, method, methodology. Yeah. But it's, now I, I don't know. Okay, no worries. Mm -hmm. Julia Taquita, one of our great members, says, Hi, AJ and Oscar. I listened to your Spanish podcast and mini stories since last week. So here's someone who has started Spanish. I enjoyed it so much. After efforts, English Spanish is my goal. So, great. That's great, yeah. Sure. Amazing. <laughs> I'm very happy with the podcast, the Unlimited Spanish podcast. Yes. I, 
started it just to 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 provide some free examples and and then and then it ended up with uh, i don't know 170 episodes with the transcript and how do people and a sample so, of, of, that's fantastic yeah? go ahead how do people find it too well, uh, they can go to unlimitedspanish.com, my website, unlimitedspanish.com. And there, there is a, a section for the podcast. Fantastic. Good. And it's on the screen right now too, unlimitedspanish.com. Uh, and I know that some, some Spanish student, uh, sorry, Spanish teachers are using uh, that podcast with uh, their students. Oh, fantastic. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. If you're... Okay. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna... Okay, so uh, you answered that one already. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, okay, Bufender says, my question is, if someone is z zero level in English and zero level in Spanish, which language will they learn faster? I guess kind of asking, which is easier to learn? English or Spanish? Uh, <laughs> I guess English. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know why. Uh, it's not that Spanish is, is more difficult than English, but I think that achieving like an intermediate level in English is, is, is quite easy for most of the people. And Spanish is, it's not that it's more difficult, but maybe you, you need like a little bit more of time, maybe one month or two months more with the lessons, but it also depends on, on your mother tongue. Ah, of course. But That's it true. is a very tricky question. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, I mean, I, I, Buf I, it was Bufendra, where are you from? Uh, Bufendra, Thai, Indian, I'm not sure, but but hmm. Asian, I believe so. Right. Also, so. We, haven't we haven't talked about this, but motivation plays a big role in when it comes to learning a language. If you really like flamenco or tacos or whatever and you are obsessed by the spanish culture you won't learn english so fast right. so it's about, about getting obsessed and i know that many of your students are very obsession i i say obsession in a good in a yeah. good way okay you yes. are so i know that many of your students really like the american culture exactly yes and right. you need that, that connection good. And that's yes, what powered that my connection. Spanish, you know, was the, the Camino. By, really? Yeah. Uh, you know, I was kind of like, no motivation, and suddenly, boom, right? Because I'm ah, going to exactly. do the Camino de Santiago. And, uh, so, right, yeah, when you, when you have something in your life that provides that, right, not just mm -hmm. a test or something. No, not, not good. Does he have any lessons of Spanish? Yes, right on the web, uh, his, his website's right on the screen here, unlimitedspanish.com. Mm -hmm. He has many. Mm -hmm. Four courses, right? Yeah, four courses. Okay. Oh, Gustavo says in Venezuela, there are not differences between B and V, also pronounced the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how long, DeLong is asking, how long did it take you to become, you know, fluent in English, comfortable in English, where it felt, you know, you could communicate easily? Well, I, it took like six months, five to six months mm -hmm. to have normal conversations the only thing about about fluency is one thing you can you can speak very with, without hesitating the, the thing is that when you want to use a specific word for example you you are talking about a general subject that you know and then the conversation goes to let's say economy mm. and then you don't know too much about economy for example uh, yeah and then, okay, you are you are um, and um, you don't feel very very sure about about your your language, your, your skills anymore. So what you need is to to add more vocabulary of, over time. But it's okay. So getting back to the question, it's five to six months. And then I started listening to. I think I, I took the second course. Uh, I started with the original course and then the power lessons. Yeah. Power lessons course. Yeah. And then I listened to um, several podcasts mm -hmm. because podcasts, it's, start, it's yeah. amazing. Hmm. Yes. 
And sometimes I, I, I got back to the lessons just to be sure. <laughs> yeah. But it was amazing because it, I could I could I could answer very quickly. And then the podcast is 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 very useful because it's uh, it's not English to to learn. It's it's natural English, like people speak in a, in general in a general conversation yeah. in a normal conversation but at the same time they try to enunciate they try to pronounce very well because they are professionals yeah. radio professionals okay and they speak very in a very clear voice usually and with podcasts you can learn anything yeah 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 and then you just and so like you said if <clears throat> if you have any specific topic or maybe an area where you need vocab it could be business. Mm -hmm. It could be movies. Yes. Whatever it is, you yes. just find podcasts on that those topics. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and your own podcast. Um, so, uh, can you talk more about your podcast? So, what kind of things do you talk about in your podcast? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the podcast has two parts. The first part, I usually introduce a, a topic, uh, uh, something about the news or a cultural topic, or for example, how. People say hello. They, 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 they think about the kisses in how because people kiss each other in Spain. Right. So one of the podcast, the, the episodes, in one of the episodes, I yeah I talk about it, and then I usually provide a very a short uh, mini story or a point of view. It's it's very short. It's like two three minutes, and then I, uh, you can practice uh, the topic. Usually you can practice the topic. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Just a couple more, if you don't mind. You're okay, time-wise? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, great. <laughs> Getting requests. How do you say I love you in Spanish? <laughs> Te quiero. <laughs> Te quiero. <laughs> Te quiero. All right. Uh... Okay, now here's a, you, you kind of, we're getting to that question, we're talking about related, uh, you know, lang coming from a language that's closer. So this is a Brazilian mm -hmm. who speaks Portuguese, which is obviously close to Spanish. I'm Brazilian, I understand your podcast well, Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, how do, how can I get fluency as soon as possible? I mean, so is, you know, so what should is Michael do, I'm not sure if that's a man or woman, but anyway, um, is anything different if they're, language is uh, closer to yours or it's just faster? It, it's usually faster, but what happens is that when you listen, it seems like you know the language mm -hmm. because it's so closed. But mm -hmm. you need to activate all the vocabulary. So I, I would suggest um, to take one of the courses and, and start with, with all the, the, the lessons and the mini stories. Uh, One second, guys. We've got a Skype problem. Let's see if we can get the we, our Skype connection just dropped. One second. I'll see if I can get Oscar back. Uh -huh. We'll get him back in a minute. All right. Let's just see. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm just going to hang up the call and call back. Okay, I'm calling him now. So let's see. Not sure what happened. Okay, it's just ringing. Not sure. Well, that's weird. Oscar is unavailable. Okay, so Oscar may have lost his uh, internet connection for a minute. Let's just give him a few minutes, so I'll chat, and uh, I'll read some of your comments and questions, and I'm sure he'll message me on Skype as soon as his connection is back. Oh, here he is. That was quick. Hey, hey, Working. you're back. <laughs> yeah, technical issues. Technical I don't problem. know. <laughs> no worries. All right, we'll just keep jumping into these uh, questions. Let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay. 
Okay, pronunciation. Um, I'm pleased, uh, pleased to hear you. I teach English, but I'm starting le to learn Spanish. I find a very mm -hmm. huge difference between English and Spanish in terms of pronunciation. How to deal with this? How do I develop pronunciation? Good pronunciation. Okay. That, that's a good question. Uh, one of the advantages of learning Spanish is, is that the way you read it, it's the way you you say it. It's pronounced exactly the way. So there are no different. Uh, there are no changes in pronunciation. Uh, if if there is a word, let's say, uh, "ola," hmm. "o la," the vowels are there are five vowels and it's the same. So I would suggest to listen to some easy and slow content with the transcript, and then you try to to say this in the same at the same time, trying to mimic, um, in, to impersonate the person mm. if possible. And then over time it becomes easier. But it's not so difficult uh, because like I said, pronunciation in, in Spanish is only five vowels. And then there are some sounds that are a little bit difficult, but English is a total different story. English is much more difficult, I think, if yeah, they did English, they learned so many, English, so, yeah. Yeah, so many exceptions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Been, oh, I think once you learn it, maybe in the beginning I understand, but I think once you learn it, like you said, I, I don't find that I think Spanish, it's, it's wonderful because you can pick up anything and just start reading and you know how to say the words just by looking at them. Yeah, exactly. And in English, even native speakers sometimes, if it's a new word, you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> like why it's horizon and not horizon right something like that, is that. okay i don't know <laughs> I, <laughs> because, I, yeah. I don't know either <laughs> often often or often we just had this uh, uh discussion on my yeah. show because i say often i don't pronounce the t and so then okay. people were noticing it and they're saying, oh, yeah. listen to this other person. And they pronounce the T. Why? So then I had to, I did this whole, I got online. I'm searching like, why? And it <laughs> goes back like a hundred years or something to, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Okay. Well, like, what are your secrets to learn? Okay. So you kind of already discussed them, but how did you reach your level of fluency in English? Can you tell us any, any other secrets or tips? Asked Alal. <laughs> secrets of, or tips mm. well I like like I said I, I, I decided to read only in English uh, except when it is, it is strictly strictly necessary like reading a ticket from the police no I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no but but reading in, in, in English all mm. the time then I am a big fan of Netflix mm. and I watch everything I've watched Friends twice uh, Breaking Bad, uh, and, and many other shows, okay? I, I usually uh, turn on the subtitles, mm -hmm. although I don't really need them, but I like I like it because I can learn the spelling at the same time. Yeah, right. So then the English like, subtitles. Yeah. yeah, English subtitles. No, no, Spanish, no, but because that interferes with, 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 the, with the learning. And it feels, uh, uh, at the beginning, it feels very, very challenging, but... After like, I don't know, 1,000 hours, <laughs> yeah. but a couple of years or three years, it's more natural. And for example, the Big Bang Theory, uh, it was kind of difficult. Uh, Sheldon speaks very fast. But, but then, after some time, it felt more natural. And, and then you can have fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wonderful. That it's not about learning. It's, it's about having fun and, and it's amazing. And meanwhile, right, you're you're enjoying the show as you're watching yeah, and getting better. Yeah, yeah, and you are very engaged because you want to know what's going to happen. It's not about I need to pay attention to this because there is some a very important and useful vocabulary for me. Hmm. And then you, after five seconds, you start thinking about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're related to the last question. Kind of, I guess let's just say go back, going back to the beginning. So back to when you first started with Effortless English, you were struggling with English. Can you describe your daily routine? Okay, yes. What I usually did is to have a set of lessons for one week. And then um, I liked to listen to it at, at least two, hour, two hours a day. Mm -hmm. One hour is okay, but 
I'm kind of obsessed. <laughs> yeah. And two hours a day, it, it, and it doesn't matter how many repetitions. What I want is just to to nail it down, you know, like to understand it completely. Yes. Yes. And then second week, another set of lessons. And the third week, then maybe I listened a couple of times, three times the, the, the previous lesson or the old old lessons. Uh, I mean, kind of going back and reviewing then, the, uh, listening to yes, old lessons. Just yep. because I, I, I felt like doing that. It's yep. not something uh, scheduled. And then... It was it was it was awesome because I could even answer more quickly for some reason. I could even yeah weird right well, yeah. feel feel very very um it felt very easy I, I don't know right you know? some for some reason like yeah you get away from it then you come back and then like something mm. has changed in your brain yes. where you it, it's mm. become a little easier yeah 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 I've had one thing I. I one thing I'd like to point out is it's very important when, when you schedule your repetitions, don't do it in one day or two. You, you have to do it over, over the course of one week. Uh-huh. If you want to repeat that 20, 20 times, do it two or three times per day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Your brain needs like to, to, to sleep, yeah. and then the day after, it feels different. The, the, the language feels different. Right, right. Excellent. Thank you, Abraham. Good question. Okay. Okay. Like, so I, I don't know. I don't know how I'd answer this for right now, but okay. So this is talking about learning languages where you know, there really aren't many materials. So, uh, so he's saying, I would, can you suggest something about learning the Georgian language? For example, I'd like to learn that language, but I have, <laughs> they have different letters and I can't find any mini stories in the language. Yeah, that's tough. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, any suggestions? <laughs> Well, uh, there are a certain there are certain languages that, for some reason, polyglots really like learning them. Navajo, mm. Swahili, and I don't know Ukrainian, like the uh, Ukrainian, and they really like it. So I would suggest to to this person to try to look up uh, forums or Facebook groups ah, where idea. where polyglots are um, are there. Uh, just discussing the, the 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 next the next thing or whatever. It's just uh, yeah. yeah, a very very an, a very interesting world, the world of the polyglots. That's they, a great they, idea. They, they, they idea. know how to find obscure obscure materials oh, yeah. uh, uh, recorded in the seventies. Just yeah, because you can go to that <laughs> secret uh, I, server and then you can download it. It's some language that only ten people speak and. You know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of become the 11. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Good idea. And polyglot, guys. So it's poly, P-O-L-Y-G-L-O-T, many tongues or many languages. And this mm-hmm. is, these are people who, I mean, they're people like Steve Kaufman who are really just like, they le- just love learning languages. They don't, it's mm-hmm. sort of like their hobby, right? I mean, like, yes. and they just keep learning lots of them, most of them. Okay, let's see a few more, Oscar, and then I... Uh, sure. I don't know if you know. I, I know, but I have I have two babies now. Wow! Yeah, twins. Two babies. Twin babies. Twins. I would say good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need, I need it's, it. It's uh, very demanding. Yes. But it's a change in one's life. Yep. Yep. It's fun. We we're having a good time, but yeah, it's yeah. a challenge. Like I said, I would like to catch up with you personally. It. Uh, we'll we'll do it. Okay. Um. Okay, well, so this is a, a question that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of common too. Okay, Dr- Dr- Dritten or Dritten says, when I understand, uh, why do I, I understand English 100%, even difficult documentaries, movies, shows, but when I start to speak, everything goes wrong? <laughs> well, because uh, in, in any language that we learn, included uh, our mother tongue, we have more passive vocabulary than active vocabulary. Mm. So we can, if you, in your own language, you start reading literature, hard literature, you understand everything, but you are not able in your own language to speak like Shakespeare, let's say, right. okay? This is passive knowledge, passive vocabulary. Mm. In order to activate the vocabulary, we need 
a lot of repetition of the same material. And then that's why I usually, um, I usually suggest to not only to repeat, but if you are, you are a fan of a certain, certain topic, just, just go for it. Just find uh, all kind of, of uh, podcasts and, and websites and start reading and, and, and listening. And you'll see that you'll activate that vocabulary very easily. And I think this too is also another area where the mini stories can help because they are that kind of most common vocab and structures. And yeah. so a lot of people may, like you said, may have this sort of wide, large, passive understanding, but they yeah. haven't gotten that just massive repetition of, you know, like focusing in on something that would seem probably pretty easy to this person, but the repetition would, would help, I think, activate that. And then hmm. as well. The debates on, on, on YouTube, uh, they are amazing to learn. Uh, you can learn many, many things. Mm. Because it's a way to present ideas in a very uh, compelling way, you know. And I really like debates about philosophical stuff and anything. Because people use a na very natural language. Yeah. And it's a very descriptive language. And they have a certain amount, amount of time to make your point. So you can learn a lot. Interesting. Debates. Cool. Debates. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, we'll go with just, a, let's see, two more. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's your opinion on, okay. What's your opinion on shadowing? The, hmm. So this person says, um, I like, I like doing shadowing. I think it's, uh, I found myself improving rapidly. What's your opinion? Mm hmm well, shadowing, uh, for those who don't know, it's a technique kind of invented by Professor Aguilas. Do you know the guy? Alexander. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alexander, Alexander Aguilas. I've never met him, but I've seen his okay. videos. He's, and he's very talented. He's very yes. talented. But the idea is you are listening, and at the same time, you try to copy, not to copy, to say exactly what you are listening hmm. So almost exactly, or you can repeat the audio because the first time it's usually challenging. In a way, you are just trying to copy. Uh, you are trying to copy the the the, listen, the 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 speaker, and I think it's it's a good technique, especially for intermediate intermediate uh, students, mm -hmm. maybe beginners. If if you like doing that, it, it's I think it's it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Some some variety in our techniques also helps us to just to to change a little bit. It's a challenge. Yes. I tried it personally. I tried it, but I find it a little bit boring. Yeah. I prefer to just to listen, <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, like you said too. I like the. I would do it sometimes for variety, and then sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, so we'll, we'll give Carol the last. Carol is a French teacher. Mm -hmm. Don't for, I told her she, it's like, you know, unlimited French, effortless French. <laughs> really? Okay. No, I'm tell, I keep telling her she should do it because people keep asking oh, me okay. that question. I'm like, I don't know French, so Carol, do it. But anyway, Carol says, it's nice to see you both have just taken, oh, she just started doing Spanish with you. She just Amazing. started Spanish with Oscar. I felt Spanish will give some fresh air to my brain after several months of intensive efforts in English. So let's kind of finish on this again, especially because, you know, obviously all my people are English learners, but uh, what advice do you have for them? So they're, they're, they're learning English and maybe some of them are interested in, in uh, adding in Spanish or so what, what do you think about that? Like how, how would they get started? With Spanish? Yeah, with Spanish. And, and if, if they're doing English, and they want to add Spanish. What would you suggest? Well, when you you let's say you're learning English and your level is intermediate or, or above, and then okay, let's 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 add it uh, add in um, Spanish. Well, that that could be very fun because it it's two languages, and then you can think okay, uh, how to say this in English and then in Spanish. So I think it, it's a good combination. Uh, I wouldn't suggest for someone who starts right now with English, mm. start another language, okay? But if you have a certain level, 
adding a new a new language it, it can kind of fosters your it refreshes your ability to learn new new vocabulary and patterns because it's kind of changing it's for me it's exactly like working out you are working out the same set of exercises over and over to just just do a, a change introduce a change in that routine and you'll see that your body reacts differently mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you? It does, yeah. Like um, uh, Steve described, it's like a language cross training, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and what's really interesting too, and with your courses, mm-hmm. as you said, your courses, uh, the text is in English, so oh, no. they actually will get they'll be learning Spanish through English with you. So they will actually get the, a little bit of that um, English expo. In other words, like if so, I'm reading what. Uh, your your translations are in English, so they yes. will be learning Spanish, but also if they're kind of from English, if you know what I mean, like rather yes. than from French or something. Which so they'll yeah. still be getting a little bit of that. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's that's true, and it feels like the English part. You, yeah. you are an English learner starting in Spanish. The English part feels like your mother tongue. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Like, oh yeah, in English is this. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, it seems difficult. No, no, in English is this. It feels like it is your mother tongue. You know? It's it's a, a very peculiar but also a very useful combination. Very great, 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 great. Oscar, it was it's so wonderful to see you again. Uh, okay. I'm sorry it's been Thank so you. long, and uh, <laughs> let's stay in touch more. And uh, uh, like I said, I'll I'll email you and catch up with you. I I maybe yes. actually want to restart doing some uh, i don't know if you still do it but uh chatting in spanish and <laughs> yes anytime fantastic unlimited spanish.com so you've got a podcast which of course is free and you've got four different courses so anyone mm-hmm. who's interested in spanish it goes from zero level his crash course up to what uh you know like higher intermediate levels right yeah yep mm-hmm. so you got kind of an, all, the full range wherever your spanish is right? okay very well Oscar, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. We'll, I'll talk to you soon. I'll email you soon. Bye bye. Okay. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Oscar. Bye bye. All right. Wonderful. So great. It's really nice to see Oscar again. Okay, guys. So um, I got to go take care of babies, but I hope you all enjoyed that. Oscar's a wonderful guy. If you know, if you want to join uh, join me with learning a little Spanish, my sp- now, Japanese, of course, right now is my main language I'm focused on. Um, like he was talking about that 80-20. For me, it's probably like 95% Japanese. And then I'm, when I have a little time, I'm doing a little Spanish. But um, his, his lessons are fantastic. I used, uh, I've used, uh, I didn't use his first course because I didn't need it. But uh, the other courses, they're all great. And I'm sure the first course is also great. So if you have any interest in learning Spanish, He's wonderful, fantastic teacher. You all can continue uh, typing <laughs> Spanish comments. Maybe some of us will have a, we can make a little uh, club on Gab or something where those of us who are learning Spanish, we could sort of uh, chat together or something, encourage each other. We can do it with Japanese too if you want. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go now and I'll be back again. What is today? Yeah, tomorrow is Friday, so. I'll be back again tomorrow, but lots of love to you and go check out Oscar's website, unlimitedspanish.com. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.